When you think of the Fallout world, there are so many different groups of people surviving together that come to mind. Whether it's the people living in Shady Sands or those living in the Capital Wasteland, it seems that the Fallout world is chock full of unique and interesting settlements and people. With so many different groups coping with the apocalypse to be seen, it seems like that when you play Fallout it revolves around one or two factions, the Enclave and the Brotherhood of Steel. Well today I'm going to expand your horizons beyond the two jocks of the wasteland. This is Fallout's alternate history. Today we are talking about a pretty well known group of people, but a group that I think doesn't get enough screen time. From their humble beginnings out of the vault to the war with the Legion, today we're covering the alternate history of New Canaan and what it could have been. Going back to the very beginning we have to cover Vault 70. Vault 70 was an experiment vault and was intended to be closed until 2190. Within this vault, all jumpsuit extruders failed after a total of 6 months after the bombs fell. This led to the vault having an extreme lack of clothing, however this vault might have lacked modesty, it did on the other hand contain 3 Garden of Eden creation kits. With the Gex in hand, once the vault doors opened, the vault dwellers formed the town of New Jerusalem within what was left of the Greater Salt Lake City area, though the wasteland had other plans for the inhabitants of New Jerusalem. The dwellers from Vault 70 saw it best to not trade or communicate with those from outside their haven, though this plan soon backfired and 43 years after the founding of New Jerusalem, they were attacked by refugees from the NCR Brotherhood War to the west. They attacked New Jerusalem because of the rumors that they were hoarding food and other supplies. Those who remained and fought died and even those who tried to flee were hunted and killed. The remaining few were led by a man named Judah Black to North Ogden where they established the town of New Canaan and the New Canaanites were born. After 50 years the New Canaanites had built a prospering town and become widely known across the wastes. They soon established and controlled many if not all of the trade routes in the wasteland north of the Mojave. For me it's this turnaround that makes the New Canaanites so extremely interesting. Because of their hold over the northern trade routes, another wasteland superpower began to take notice. The NCR saw the growing power in the north and kept their distance. The NCR did not trust the New Canaanites because of their past interaction with heavily religious groups. Though, after many small run-ins, the NCR's distrust faded as they soon realized that the New Canaanites were honest, hard-working traders. They also realized that the New Canaanites were strong fighters and been keeping the raider population in check in the north for quite some time. Raising a strong population that can not only communicate and trade with others around the wasteland but also protects the region they control, turned their small little home into a safe haven for the entire northern wasteland. This is needed as the wasteland in and around Utah had become overrun with raiders, tribals and warlords, making travel extremely dangerous. In time, New Canaan's trade routes became larger and more diverse, soon pushing them into this steady competition with the NCR, but most noticeably the Crimson Caravan Company, but soon allowing the Crimson Caravan to establish a base of operations within their city limits, regulated by the New Canaanites of course, as were all traders based in New Canaan. This version of New Canaan would have not only been a haven, but a fully fleshed out town for the player to visit, trade, and most likely collect bounties, hosting a variety of locations and places to explore and NPCs to interact with. The town as a whole bordered the Great Salt Lake and is protected by a large concrete barrier. The inner area of the town was planned to be relatively intact and almost looked surprisingly good for surviving the Great War. Surprisingly, the inhabitants were not solely New Canaanites. Some of them were ghouls and even super mutants, making this town one of the most diverse in the wasteland, right up there next to Broken Hills, welcoming both ghouls, super mutants, and humans alike. The area surrounding New Canaan was planned to be mostly ruins inhabited by squatters and drifters, the main problem in the region being refugees from the NCR Brotherhood War, who over time became more and more hostile towards the over-controlling New Canaanites. The refugees that couldn't or wouldn't follow the strict rules of New Canaan were exiled and forced to leave 
and live outside the scrap walls that surrounded the town. This could have very well led to the player needing to settle the trouble on both sides, as the new Canaanites only gave supplies and water to those staying within the walled-in section of the town. This would inevitably lead to those outside forcing their way in, or at least trying to. This could have started a conflict between the two groups and possibly turned out much like New Jerusalem. It honestly makes me sad to know that New Canaan was burnt to the ground in canon. I would have loved to visit it. Perhaps the New Canaanites will show up again in the wasteland. It seems that they are a fairly resilient bunch. What do you think? Would you want to visit the alternate New Canaan? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the wasteland. And so it was that the conflict between the New Canaanites and the White Legs was finally resolved. The courier's involvement had tipped the scale, shifting the fragile balance of power.